Hey, hey, everybody, welcome on into the studio. I'm Jessica Putnam Phillips, and tonight on Clay Share Live, we're going to be talking about Mako fundamental underglazes. Really, we're going to be talking about underglazes and all the different ways you can use them, how you can apply them, and how they can work in your ceramic practice. Now, I've used Mako for the last three years. They weren't my first company's choice of underglaze because I was on a budget, so I started with speedball you can see i have quite a bit of it because they're the most affordable and when you're a student you're looking not for things on a budget but mako is just a little bit more than speedball and the quality quality of both of them are about the same and we're going to talk about that and i also want to talk about the quality of other companies under glazes because really a lot of them are really close like they're they're kind of an even line as far as quality so i'm going to show you a lot of things there's a lot of things happening on the table i've got a lot of show and tell i'm going to talk you through how i did all of these pieces all of these pieces are classes on clay share so there's uh more than two dozen classes here on this table alone so if you're looking for pottery classes, check out clayshare.com or download the Clayshare app. We're also giving away two $25 gift certificates to Clayscapes Pottery because they're awesome and they're sponsoring the month of May here at Clayshare. And they are also doing a Mako promo where you can save 20% off on Mako underglazes, Mako glazes, Mako stroking coats, Mako designer liners, Mako's lusters. We're using the code MAKO, all lowercase, 2023. That's only at Clayscapes Pottery, though. That's not at other places. So if you go to a different place, don't use that code. It's not going to work for you. You're going to be like, why isn't this working? And it's because that's not for them. It's only for Clayscapes. OK, so I decided to start with the MAKO Fundamentals underglazes. And I really like that they call them the Fundamentals. They have the set of 12 right here, and here I have it. And these are kind of your basic starter underglaze colors. Like if you're looking for the colors that, um, you know, you wanna add to your studio, you're not sure where you're gonna go with these, how they're gonna work with your glazes, this is the kit to get. And you can buy these individually or you can buy them, I believe in sets, I got sets. Please tell me they still sell sets. I've had this since before COVID, so things during COVID changed a bit. So actually, I've been using the Mako underglazes for about four or five years now. Kind of lost track of time for a couple of years. I think many of us did. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go close up and I'm going to talk you all through what I did here with these fundamentals. And I'm going to adjust the folks on Instagram. Doop, 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 doop. So you guys can see but not be, not be in the way. All right. So... The is 2 p.m. Eastern time or Pacific time. It's 5 p.m. Eastern, which would be 2 p.m. Pacific, folks. Clay Share's times are always published as East Coast times because that's where we are. Same time zone as New York City. So you can just remember that for future reference. Okay. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I, I realized that when I saw the red wasn't up. So when I do my test plates, First of all, you make a plate, or, or if you are a person that paints bisque ware, you buy your bisque plate. And I really like plates. They can hang on the wall. You see I have built-in hangers. I'll string some wire in here, and I have a class on doing that, so if you want to know how to do that. And did this one get strung yet? No, that one's not strung. This one, little different hanging mechanism on this one here. See how it comes out the top? But these are really easy to store and to see all at a glance. Test tiles are great too. But the thing about test tiles is now you have got these little guys that you have to put somewhere, right? And yeah, you can put holes in these and you can hang them, but they get a little clunky, I think. So this right here looks really cool in your studio and um, gives you a really nice snapshot view of all the underglazes, right? So because this is the fundamental set, it's kind of the basic. And what I did is, this is Laguna 16 porcelain, so you want to use the clay that you're going to use in your studio. So if it's B-Mix, if it's Laguna 60, if you're using uh, some high water clays, if you're using standard clay, if you're using Sheffield pottery clay, whatever clay you use, 
you want to make your test plates out of because it's not going to do you any good at all to make a test plate out of a clay you're not going to use. So I use the Laguna 16 porcelain, that's a cone 5-6 porcelain. A lot in my studio I also use Laguna B-Mix, that's this, you can kind of see the color shift. The B-Mix here is a little creamier, the, uh, the porcelain's whiter. So because I switch back and forth between the two and they're really close to each other, I, I get similar color results when I do tests between the two. Porcelain's always going to give you brighter results than any other clay out there, but it's, it's still really, they're still really close and close enough so that I know they'll work together. All right, so the way I do these is, and I have a class on making an underglazed test plate, so you can check that out. I have a class on making the actual plate itself and a class on how to apply the underglazes so that you know how to map it out and so how you can do it in a way that makes sense for you. So here I like to do them and you will notice they're all rainbows. That's just the way that I like to work. But you could do it a little differently if you want to and you like to lay your colors out in a different fashion, that's fine. So what I'll do is take all the colors I have that I'm gonna make a test plate from, I line them up, put them in the order that I'm gonna have them on my plate, label my plate with a black underglaze pencil. You could use a paintbrush and write it on with a paintbrush if you want to, that's fine. And for underglazes, now underglazes go on under the glaze. If they do not have something on top of them, they'll just be a dry matte finish. And you can see when I wiggle this around, that shiny, that's because I put a clear glaze on top. So now I have a bunch of information already. I have got how my clay is gonna look, and I've got how the clear gloss glaze I use in my studio is gonna look with them. So that's really important for me when I'm deciding what colors to use in my work. So. Once I have everything mapped out, on this one you'll see a black line. I don't know if you can see it. You can see it up here on the china white. I drew a black line with the underglaze pencil. And I did that so I could test the opacity to see how many coats it takes to hide that line. Because a lot of times I like to use these in a watercolor fashion. And I want to see how many coats I can put on before they become really chalky or just really heavy looking. So, Right here, starting with Dragon Red, it's, it's a really pretty red. And you can see lighter here, because I did one coat on the entire area, and then I did two coats, and then I did three coats. So this is giving me three coat information, full strength, not watered down, just straight out of the jar, so that I know exactly how these are gonna look. Now, watered down would be similar to a one coat. So I can see the tone I would get if I was just gonna do one coat. So Dragon Red is a really nice blue-red, a little cooler. And then they have their Fire Engine Red, which is a warmer, so it has more orange tones to it. So they have a cool red and a warm red, which is nice, because depending on what you're doing, you might want to have more cool tones or more warm tones on your work. And then their orange is just a standard orange. I actually really like their orange. It's nice. The bright yellow really is bright and it stays translucent with three coats. I can see through it, which is nice for me and what I'm doing. The apple green, that is a chartreuse, but it, it kind of leans towards mint a little bit. So, I don't know, do you want me to go closer? Can you guys see this? Is it big enough for you guys? You can, yeah, bring it in a little bit so we can all see. Um, you can see it. Oh, all right, I say. So it's a little minty. So with the chartreuse, um, it's it's a little. It's not a chartreuse. So I just say that. Definitely wouldn't say it's chartreuse. The apple green is very much not. But one thing you'll notice: three coats of apple green. We lost that black line, so it doesn't stay translucent at all. Uh, one coat, but it's streaky. So that could be a problem with your finish, right? So then leaf green, one coat, we've got a little translucidity, but once we go to two coats, three coats, it's gone. So it's not translucent. And we'll talk about another company in a minute. Um, I'm gonna show you other companies' test plates to compare to this. That's their underglazes stay translucent. So if you really are into that translucent, but you want a lot of bright pop of color, you'll wanna check that out in a bit. So King's Blue, which is their cobalt, blue, like royal blue, cobalt blue, king's blue. I guess they didn't want to call it royal blue because Speedball already has a royal blue and Mako didn't want to have a confusion going on. But one coat, 
you can see the line, two coats, we start to lose it, three coats, it's gone, so just gone. Uh, bright blue is like a medium blue tone right here. And you know what? Until we get to coat three, you can still see that black line, but it, it does get lost a little bit. The, it's called regal purple, but it's a very pinky purple. It's more mauve I think, than purple. So one coat, we see the line, two coats, barely, three coats, it's, it's kind of gone. The brown. Now, browns can be funny with underglazes, and it can be really hard to get a brown that doesn't burn out and, and looks not patchy. Theirs does really well. So we've got a little bit of streaky. One coat's a little thin. I think you're definitely going to go to two coats for color. Three coats, still a little translucent, more so than some of the others. Their jet black is really nice. So I do a lot of Mishima inlay. Their jet black is a nice go-to for the inlay. Uh, I like it a lot because the black stays true. It's nice and smooth. I don't know if you can see, I'm not having any bubbling, any bumpies. It's just a really nice, smooth underglaze. One coat, it's, you can't even see the line really. Two coats, you don't see it. Three, you definitely don't, it's opaque. But when you want a black to be nice and opaque, this is a good one to go for. And then their china white, which surprised me because the china white, at three coats, which is here, you can still see that underglaze pencil line. So one coat, two coat, three coats. And why would you want a white? Well, sometimes your clay is a creamy clay, like a bee mix, or a darker clay, like a red clay, or maybe a chocolate clay, and you want white to pop. So you might want a white underglaze. You could also use it as a base for maiolica, or a base for underglaze transfers. So there's a lot of things you can do with a white underglaze. Sometimes people just rely on the clay to be their white, and you can do that, but that doesn't always work. Okay, so here we have the test plate. So this will hang on the wall next to all my others, and it is just the basic 12 colors from Mako. So it's a nice starting point, right? So if you're trying to decide what colors you might like, and maybe just seeing this will help you decide too. The, uh, we can move on and compare it. So here I have Speedball's colors. You know, I have a lot of Speedball. So you can see there's more color options on this plate. But comparing them to each other, you know, we were talking about the Chartreuse, and I don't know if it picks it up, if you guys can see the color shift difference. Now, Mako, um, their Chartreuse, they, well, it's apple green, but it's very minty compared to Speedball's Chartreuse. And if we look at, um, who else is chartreuse do I got handy here? If we look at Sour Apple from Mako Stroke and Coat line, that is very much more olivey. So I should take photos of all these and put them up for you guys, all my test plates. Really, you should make your own, but this is a good thing to have to help you decide what colors you want to get. All right, so there's the Mako Fundamentals, and I want to show you... I was talking about a company that does translucents. If you're really into translucent colors and you want to keep that uh, translucent quality and you can see the lines on all these. I, I did brown underglaze pencil, so not even black. But all of them, and this is one, two, three coats, all of them at one coat, you can see the line. And this is Colors for Earth. And I know we're not talking about Colors for Earth tonight. They're going to be joining us in to September as the sponsor. We're going to be talking about them a lot later in the year, in September. But for those who are looking for a translucent color, you might want to look at this. And this is the thing about underglazes. There's so many different companies out there and so many different products out there that it's good to know the differences between them. So I want to show you some more pots. So you've never gotten the leaf green to be that green. It comes out kind of brown. Should you water it down fire to cone six? Is that too hot? So you're, are you talking about the leaf green on the Mako? So this is straight out of the jar, three coats, not watered down at all. And this is cone five, cone six, just starting to bend. So we consider that a hot cone five, right there. Um, and when we say that, a cone isn't one number. So 2167 is cone five, but 2168 is not cone six. It doesn't mean, oh, you went over a degree, now you're at cone six. That's not how it works. 
uh, it takes like 20 degrees before you actually get into cone six. So you could be a 2174 and it's still cone five, but it's hotter. So it, it starts to melt a little more at cone five things will melt a little more at those higher ends. So which company has a bright pink to use on flamingos? Oh, I know here I am supposed to be talking about one in particular. Let me show you. Uh, this is Speedball and there is their pink. And I think this is a very flamingo-y pink. It's a little corally, which I think you kind of want for flamingos. So that one right there is a really nice one. Now, Mako has a lot of other underglaze colors. They introduced a whole bunch of new ones, but I have walls of underglaze. Um, I have about 300 different underglaze colors, and that might even not be all currently in the studio. And I'm trying not to go out of my way to buy too many more unless a company really wants me to test it for them, and then I will. But um, I do want to get some of the new Mako colors. They look really nice, and there's a lot going on, so I will see about doing that. So maybe Mako has a flamingo-y pink, but I have not tried it yet. So for what I have in my studio, Speedball pink is what I have. And the same thing uh, for like, um, you know, the Mako, the Amico, they might have a pink. Amico has a coral. Let me, grab, let me grab that test plate. I didn't grab this one off the wall. Let's see if I can get it off because I wired it on pretty tight the other day. Okay, so here's my Amico test plate. And down here they have a coral. Let me see if I can get that glare so it's not on you. So the Amico coral, right? So this is why we do this, right? Look, I can pull this off and I can say, all right, I know what that looks like, but how does that compare to the Speedball pink? And I can put them right up against each other. The pink is actually, the Speedball pink is this one here and it's actually more corally than the Amico coral. Is that funny? Um, so having all of these as a reference is really helpful in your work. If you're looking for a specific color, if you have a commission or you want to make one thing and it be the exact color, right, this is the way to do it. So is there a red that I recommend for hearts? Um, there's some great reds. Do you want your red to be cooler or do you want your red to be warmer? Because this dragon red I think is gorgeous. I like blue reds though. I like cooler reds. I think an orange red's nice, but I love this. And maybe, how close can I go? Can you see the color on that dragon red? I mean, you can. And the Instagram folks can't see. Look at that dragon red. So these are a little streaky because my jars of underglaze froze. And when you open them up, all right, zoom back out a bit. When you open them up and they've frozen, they will have separated a bit and be a little grainy. So what you have to do is, yeah, you can see here. Um, can you see inside that? Does it look grainy to you? Let's see if I can hold it there. See how it's grainy? If you don't mix that up really well, what's going to happen is it's going to go on streaky. It's going to go on grainy. And so some of these, when I was brushing them on, I realized after I, like, brushed on a coat, I was like, ooh, that's a little grainy. I need to mix it up a bit more. And so I had to just mix it a little more. But you mix it up and it's fine and it shouldn't be a problem. If you're still having problems with it staying a little grainy, then you can add just a drop of what's called Darvan 7. And that's a deflocculant. And that will help make it smoother and get more even coverage. So that's whether you're using Speedball, whether you're using Amico, Mako, it doesn't matter. You can add that to it and you will get a much smoother underglaze. You do not want them to freeze, ideally, uh, but if they do, you can still save them. They're not ruined. So do Mako underglazes stick to shelves? So the Mako underglazes at cone five I will be careful with them because when you're doing blues, blues sometimes flux and stick, same with black. So I would test in your kiln and your clay, because every clay is different, 
it might stick. But overall, they are a matte finish, which means they're going to be dry. They're not going to flux. So that's for the underglazes. So just make sure that you test them, though. I don't want, yeah, look, wait, I want to show you. <laughs> okay, what, I, what does it say? What does it say on the box, folks? What's that? Yes, keep from freezing. Yeah, how many times did my studio freeze? And we all know the solution is the new studio is getting built. And once that's done, freezing will, I've never had my studio freeze before. In over 20 years, it's never froze before until uh, here. So uh, when they freeze, you got to do a little bit of work on them to, uh, you know, deal with that. So these will fire at low fire temperatures. I fired a cone 5.6. Some people um, will fire high with them. It says you can go to cone 10 with these, but again, you're going to want to test. So because I'm only doing cone 5, I get these results, but if you're going to cone 10, you'll definitely want to do a test on a cone 10 clay, right? Post pictures of the plates. So I put them up in the clay share social media as I do them, but um, I need to create a file for my premium members. That'll be on clay share prime. So I will put them up and there'll be a resource for everybody to use there. You can find them if you go to the clay share Facebook and Instagram feed, but you'll have to scroll back and find where they are. This one's not up yet because I just took it out of the kiln this afternoon. So this one's brand new. All right, so Mako has a strawberry and then uh, a Miami pink too, and it gives you a watermelon. Okay, so that's the thing. Uh, there's, you know, there's a lot of colors out there and you might not want to buy them all, nor should you, but you got to start somewhere. So I think this is a good starter pack. Now, the other thing, these underglazes are mixable, so you can blend them together. If you're not happy with, something like if your yellow is just too lemony and you want a tiny bit of orange in there you could mix them up in a separate container and create a new color and you can do that with all the underglazes you can do it with makos you can do it with speedball with amico with colors for earth so there's not a problem for mixing so honestly you think about back to grade school right when we first were learning about color and we're first painting all those same principles with the color wheel apply. So you can mix your colors together and get all new colors. So maybe you don't need to go out and buy that one specific color. Maybe you just get a few and then you mix it from there. Now it is really nice to be able to say, oh, I want this exact red and I don't want to add anything to it, right? I just want that color straight out of the jar. It comes that way every single time. That's nice. but maybe you're starting out and you've not used under glazes before and you just don't want to buy every jar in the world so alrighty so I've got to move some of these there's a lot of them and I want to show you so we can zoom out a little bit I want to show you some different ways to use under glazes now most people will use an underglaze as a a color to color their clay and it is an underglaze and that means it goes on under a glaze. So the name tells you everything you need to know. It goes on under your glaze, except when it doesn't, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, so this right here, I took my under glazes, and then I brushed on just two coats, and I blended my colors a little bit, and then I carved through them. So this is a scraffito pattern that I did. So this is one thing you can do with under glazes. You can brush your colors on a leather hard piece, and then carve through it. So this is done before you bisque fire, and then you let it dry. Then once it's dry, you bisque fire it. For glazing, just put a clear glaze on. Now, this one actually happens to be EM Satin, which is a clear, but it's a satin clear, and the recipe is up on claysharesources.com. That recipe is available for you. You can go get that. That's available to the public, and it's called EM Satin. If you want to mix it up yourself, you do. It's a glaze you make. If you don't want to mix it up, Georgie's has a satin clear, so that's Georgie's clay, and they make a satin clear that's really nice. So you could, you know, check that out. So this is one way to use them, and it's a really simple way. Now you can always just put the colors on your clay, 
And one of my favorite ways to show people how to use them is to do a staining technique where you put the underglaze on, and that's what I did here. So I brushed on a couple different colors of underglaze, and then I wiped it back with a sponge. You know, you'll take your brush and you'll put it on. This is after you bisque fire it, though. So on a bisque clay piece, and this is something I pressed lace into, I got this beautiful lace pattern on the surface, and I did it on the handle. I did a fancy, um, this is the handle from, is it the teacup? Handbuilt teacup class. The only thing I did is I put a curly Q to the bottom. In the handbuilt teacup class, I think I made it just wider. This one, I made it a little narrower and I rolled it. So this is actually a hollow handle here. But I pressed the lace into that too. And once this is bisque fired, I added underglaze and then I wiped back the excess. So the underglaze is it. And then again, this is that EM satin. So E as in Edgar, M as in Mary, satin. So it's just a EM satin. I don't know who EM was, but it's their satin. It's a great glaze. And you can add colorants to it if you want to color it, so it, it does do nice coloring. So this is a great way to use it if you like a lot of texture and you want to show off a lace pattern or some other intricate pattern. Similar to that, if you want to highlight texture but you want to go with colors, here I use the Royal Blue, which is a speedball, but you could go ahead and use the King's Blue from Mako. Put it on, again, this was bisqued, put it on, wiped it back, and then on top of that I put my Lily of the Valley green. And this is speckled clay, so you're seeing the specks come out. But it adds more depth to it instead of just the bright green by itself. It, it has something going on. Same thing I did here with the orange underglaze applied to the bisqued piece. You know, you put it on, you stain it, you wipe it all back, and then I glazed with my buttercup yellow. And that's all that was happening. It's just the orange with the buttercup. Now this stamp is from De La Designs, her little chicken stamp, and then I used my Daisy uh, textured rolling pin for the background. And this was a tutorial we did. We made these chicken vases together in uh, prime time. So that was a premium class we did together. And it's good to see them finished, right? So you can see what they look like. The top, I believe I dipped in Clayscape's cream. So that was what I did for the rim of this. Ever tried Scraffito on dark clay? Yes. So I actually have, I don't know where the piece is, but you can do Scraffito with, you know what? Hold on, I think I got it. Now, I did not use white, I used the slip, a white slip, but you could put white underglaze. So this is a dark clay. There's your clay body right here. Look at this. Beautiful dark clay. You can do white underglaze, couple coats, right? And then you carve through. Now, this would be scraffito when you carve away. And so the clay is your line color. So that's scraffito. Mishima is the opposite where you take the dark clay, you carve into it, and then you fill that line as an inlay with like a white. So for Mishima, and you could do the same thing. So you'd get a white line on a dark clay or you can let the clay body itself be your line. Look how beautiful this is, all the detail. This is uh, from an installation I did with over 100, I made over 100 plates. I think 96 plates actually went to the um, Veterans Art Triennial in Chicago, and these were hanging up there in Chicago for a while, so you could see that whole big, huge piece, and I've shared that before. But yeah, so you could do the opposite. I like light clay, but if you like dark clay, you could do white. You could do yellows. Um, this yellow, here it is on a light clay, but it would look amazing on a dark clay. So if you're gonna use the darker clays, you wanna think about mid-tones and lighter for your dark clays. If you're using light clays, mid-tones and darker. Do you see how the yellow, the carving is there, but it's kind of lost. It's really subtle, but you really see it pop on the darker color right down here. See how much this pops with this blue or on the screen. But the yellow, it's just, it's like it's there, but you got to hunt for it. So keep that in mind. You can do a subtle piece, but it's really nice when it pops like that.
All right, so other things you can do with underglazes is if you like to use underglaze decals, you can then take, after you've applied your underglaze decal, you can take your underglaze and you can do your edges. So you don't have to have an unfinished looking edge. You can just brush a band of underglaze all the way around and that gives, and look, there's a little bit, you can kind of see the edge, signed on the back. <laughs> this is my Scandi Birds underglaze decal design, and you can get that from Sambao Studios, and their website is chinaclayart.com. And this, this right here is probably the most popular design that I've done for them, is the Scandi Birds. Although my mushrooms is a close second. And I've seen a lot of cardinals and birches lately. A lot of people uh, loving on that design too. But same thing, I put this blue pattern on my plate and then I did the edges with the blue Can you see it all the way around just to finish it because I didn't want it to just end I wanted to do something so you don't need to use a lot of it you could just use a little now yeah you could just use a glaze on your edge if you want to but if you're trying to keep down the amount of glazes under glaze is really nice because you can have a few of them you can have like 10 or 15 under glazes and one glaze just the clear, right? So you don't have a ton of glazes. For a long time, I had switched over to using mostly underglaze and just one clear, the gloss, sometimes the satin. Here's another. So here I use the underglaze where I took the wet clay after I rolled the slab out. And this was a tutorial we did together on Clay Share. So this little bat tray we did. I did the purple underglaze, I did these moons in a uh, chartreuse green, and then I laid the bat underglaze transfer, underglaze decal, on the surface when it was flat, like wet clay. And then I peeled it all up, and then I used my rim template to cut my shape. You can see it from the back. And then I used a GR pottery form to press it in. So this is a way to color the back sides of underglaze decals. So you put your color on first, then your decal on top. So you're coloring the backside, which is really cool. So the difference between these and stroke and coat, right. So stroke and coat has glaze mixed in it. Under, they are not an underglaze. Stroke and coat is already got uh, glaze material. So you can use stroke and coats as an underglaze, but they do have glaze in them. So they will flux and they will melt and they will stick to your kiln shelf. So keep that in mind. Uh, this is a fun, so if you like to do a, it's really dusty too, but that's because it was sitting over by the pellet stove, so it's not clay dust on here, it's, it's pellet stove dust, so I must apologize, let's wipe it clean, so there. So this was a bisque plate that I had in the studio, and I wanted to do something to it, I didn't know what, you know, it was just sitting there, and I just took a sumi brush, you know, one of these dipped it in the like king's blue a cobalt blue and i just painted it we did this together we made the fish plates together but how fun is this and it's a great shape for fish because it's long and skinny and and it was very fun to do it's just freehand very whimsical i know it's not everybody's style but sometimes you want to do something really fun and for summertime this is great right little fish little fish platter Talking about underglaze transfers, the jet black, if you put your transfer on, and this was a tutorial we did, so I have a flask, hand-built, this is hand-built, folks, so you can do this, you can make this. Hand-built flask class, and I actually did a second class for my premium members as a live tutorial, and we made these Halloween ones using Sandbow's Halloween edition underglaze decals, and I did brush a little bit of the jet black underglaze at the bottom and on the little neck just to finish it because if not it was just white and it needed something and that really kind of finished it off. You could use glaze but when you go ahead and do that the black on it then you just clear glaze the whole thing and all the work's done you just put your clear glaze on. So Clayscapes is still sold out on my Celadons. Yes, I know. They, um, I don't know when they're going to get them back in. Hopefully soon. I really hope so soon. As soon as I know, I will share with you all. 
So here's a similar technique where I stained, but I didn't use just one color. I used red and orange, red, orange, red, orange, red, orange, red, orange. So I alternated my underglaze colors, and then I wiped it back on bisque. So this was bisque fired already. And then I put my buttercup, look at that, boom. It's yellow. Believe it or not, this is just a yellow glaze on underglaze. That's all that's here. And you know that when you see it that way. That's, so this is what the glaze would look like by itself. Looks nice. It's pretty, right? But look at the difference. We get so much more depth. You get a lot more colors. You can really see the texture. And it just mixes it up a bit. Could have just glazed it the pretty yellow. But it's kind of nice to have options. So what we do with underglazes is you turn a glaze into more than one color. Here we have just this yellow, but look at the color you get when you put red under it, the color you get when you put orange under it. So you get so many more options. So you can always test them with your glazes. Um, okay, let's keep going because there's a lot. We're talking about carving. The glazes are, all the glazes over the underglaze, all celadons. Not all of them, but my celadons are translucent, so you can put them on uh, on top of underglazes and they look amazing. But a lot of these are clear, like this is clear. This is the 2167 clear recipe that I use in my studio. And you can get that recipe on Clayshare Resources. Same as with the satin. See the gloss finish? See how shiny that is? So this is the royal blue, like the king's blue. I put it on the entire plate. So this plate was just a solid disc of blue when it was leather hard. It's a porcelain plate made with the Wa Tu system from GR Pottery Form. So it's a hand-built plate and it has a little bit of a curve to it. You can just see that there. You could, of course, wheel throw a plate, but I did the entire surface and then I carved this design. So this is a freehand carving and I just bring it in close. So you can see all the lines and all the carving. Do you see that? All the lines in there and all the texture you get. And you can see it there. You can see it there. But you could do scraffito, so you just, the entire thing, which is what we did on this cup, but I used three different colors. This one, I just used one color. See all the different things? I mean, I did this with the same underglaze color, does both these, right? Paint on bisque ware, apply it to leather hard green ware and carve into it. Lots and lots and lots of options. Let me show you another blue. If you're a lover of blue like I am, here is a Mishima inlay piece I did. So this one, when it was leather hard, I, I made this plate, I applied these, I sculpted grenades and made a sprig mold from it so I can make multiple grenades when I need them for my soldier work that I do. And I attached these by slipping and scoring, like we always attach sprigs. So if you wanna know more about sprigs, I've got a few classes on there so you can learn how to make your own sprigs, all different designs. So once it was leather hard, I covered it with this Mr. Marks Wax On. And Clayscapes now carries these. I just found out they sell this. So if you're buying stuff, do one-stop shopping. Get yourself your, your wax on. You want the wax on because it's water-based and it's really great for the Mishima inlay. So then I hand carved this pattern into the surface. So every line you see here is actually an, a carving, you know that I did. And then once it was bisque fired, the wax burns away. And then I went in and using just one color, this is just one color blue, like the King's blue. I watercolor one coat. You can see how light it is. Look how light this is. I watered it way, way down. And then almost full strength we have here. So you get all these gradients in between. And then I put a clear glaze on top. And then I, after glaze firing it, it went back in the kiln for another firing with this platinum luster. Sometimes it's called silver luster, but that's what's on the grenades. So this is, and then there's the back. So I did the same design carved on the back. This shows you under glaze without a glaze on top. Do you see? It's just the matte finish. It's very dry. But it doesn't stick to the kiln shelf, FYI. And there's this right here. Give it a second for focusing. So it's uh, very versatile what you can do with underglazes. So one color, you can get so many different things. I showed this already. This is, uh, I think I showed this already. 
This is a cupcake stand, although we've made cake stands before, but we did this together using Amico's Smugs, which are the semi-moist underglaze colors. But everything I did here, you could just use underglazes, like just the jars, right? You could use the jars if that's what you have. You're not limited. You don't have to have, you know, I really hope everybody sees you don't have to use one particular thing. Um, right here, painting on the surface, if you like to do that. This was a piece made with Limoges porcelain. This was actually made in Valerie's in France. I made this uh, back in 2015 when I was in France. Um, I got to go to France for five weeks and I got to stay in the south of France. I made pots for like half the day and then I went to Monte Carlo and then the next day I would go to Italy and the next day I'd go to Cannes and Nice and it was really a tough five weeks. You know, I made pots for half the day and then I traveled the south of France. I know, you all feel bad for me that I had to endure that. But this was a piece I made while I was there and I made the plate, bisque fired it, and then I hand painted the flowers and we did a tutorial based on this. So there's actually a, a class we did based on these. And this actually has gold. If you can see, this right here is gold painted on after. But yeah, this is a great, I didn't keep many pieces. Most of them sold that I made um, in the gallery in France. So a lot of them sold. Some were kept in the permanent collection over there. But this right here is one. I got like four of them I brought home with me. I didn't get to keep many. So another way you can use underglazes, right? This one right here, I used tape. I put tape down first, and then I just covered the rim with underglaze. So that's how I got these stripes. I did that on the bisque plate, so after it was bisque fired, and then I clear glazed, and these are all laser decals, and I have a class on making your own laser decals. We just did an updated live tutorial with that with a brand new printer that you can buy, so if you have a hard time finding the printer and the paper, I walk you through that. So if you've ever wanted to make your own, this right here, you can do it. How great is that? So this is a beautiful piece. I had to make two because I apparently can't smell. Spell. <laughs> I can't spell. No, I can sometimes, but sometimes you're, you're too close to it and you don't see it, right? So you try to get the Mr. Marks wax on every time you order, but they're always sold out. Is Clayscape sold out now? because they just told me yesterday they have it. So maybe, maybe they have it there. All right, so I wanted to show you some more. This was a plate we did together using underglazes where we actually painted the design and then carved into the design we painted. So we just did the colors in certain areas in a leather hard piece and we carved it. And we also did one like this here. So this is basically the same technique, just a little different colors. And we did this a few, this was done about four years ago, I think. This one, three maybe years ago. So there were a little while. The dots on here are gold, luster, right? Look at that. Isn't that sweet though? Cute little plate. So this is a tutorial. Oh my gosh, I got so much to share with you. Oh, Mayolica. Let's talk about when you use an underglaze not under the glaze. And so I've got two examples of Maolica here. One is our, what did we call this class? Uh, the TV tray class, the, the cafeteria tray, the cafeteria tray, the lunch tray, the dinner tray, I don't know. But this is a class where I show you how to make this tray and how to glaze it. This is really fun. Um, so. I have a child who cannot stand their food to touch. It's a thing. And there are adults that are the same way. I mean, she's an adult, she's my child, but she is actually an adult technically. So she has issues with that. A lot of people do. Plus, it's really cute to be able to put your food in different little sections, right? Especially if you're having some people over for entertaining. We also have a snack tray, which is just two sections. And then we did a three section one too. So there's multiple, sectional trays as classes on clay share. So you can do, uh, the snack tray is great because you can have your own personal salsa and chips. If you wanna do uh, hot, like buffalo wings with celery and blue cheese dressing, you can do that on them. So they're great for entertaining. But this is Maolica. 
And that's where we glaze the piece with cream from Clayscapes first, but you could do a white underglaze if you want to. It's just by using the cream glaze from Clayscapes, I now do not have to glaze on top because it has a glaze. And then when I paint it, I just use my underglaze and I just go in and paint it. So this is underglazes on the surface of glaze. And then when it fires, what happens is it gets so hot that the underglaze sinks down in. It sinks down into the glaze. So it's in there. It's in there. It's, it's like, uh, what is it, Prego? It's in there? Is that the one? That it's in there? And here's a vase. If you look at the Maolica class, um, we did this on plates, we've done this on vases, bowls, all kinds of things. So I give you a couple different designs for that Maolica. So it's a modern version of Maolica, right? Let me keep track of time. Oh my gosh. And we're giving away. Did you pull two names tonight? I did. Oh. All right. Uh, I have a couple more things to share. <laughs> this mug right here was a Mishima inlay. So I did do all the carving on it while it was leather hard. And then after bisque firing, I went in and I hand colored it. Now I did use the colors for earth on this piece. Although you could go ahead and use an underglaze from Mako or Speedball or Amico. Then I clear glazed it. After it fired, look at all the gold. I sort of got carried away. Look at it. Yeah, I know. It's super fancy. And I did Mother of Pearl. That's why it's so extra shiny. So it's like the fancy cup. And I'm keeping it for now. I haven't decided what I'm doing with it. It's just living in the studio. Uh, okay, back to underglazes. I think we used Stroke and Coat, but my brush dude, so we did a whole class. We did people vases, and we made brush dude in the people, fa in the people vase class. So if you want to make your own brush dude, uh, he's just the vase. I call him the brush dude because hey, he's a dude, and he's got the brushes. So, and he has worms, but we won't talk about that. He's embarrassed. So I use Stroke and Coat for my colors, and I did put a clear glaze on top, but you could use underglazes and put a clear glaze on top. Same thing. So you can do painting faces if you like to do faces. Here's another face we did during, uh, last year I did faces. We had a whole bunch of face tutorials where we were painting faces on the surface. Look how sweet she is. This is like the sweetest little plate. Would have been a great Mother's Day gift. I'm sorry, Mom. But next year, make this for your mom. Right? And then I went back and I did gold on the edge. You can see that gold rimming on the edge right there, just all the way around, little rim. So pretty. Right? So what else? I got a couple more things. So is the underglaze full strength or watercolored? Good question for the Maolica. You can see it's slightly watered down. You can go thicker, but do you see how it's a little bit watered down here? And then this is a little thicker. So this one is more watered down than this. And that's okay, I like the difference in it. And you can also do two coats, one coat watered down, and then the second coat watered down on top to build up intensity for your color. You can do full strength. This one right here is probably full strength, that little petal down there. But I find when you water them down a little bit, they flow a little easier. So it's easier for you to to brush them across your surface. They don't drag and get stuck as easily when they're full strength. So the, I do like to water them down. All right, you ready for something amazing? Mm -hmm. You ready? Look at this. Is that a pot? What is that? Yes, it is. So I have a class on making your own ceramic wall canvases. So this we did a couple years ago. Maybe it was just last year. But we have all different shapes that I made. And you can hang them on the wall. I show you how to build, make these built-in hangers. And you can hang them, or you could just sit them out as a trivet, or sit it out as a coaster. But the great thing about this, not only did we make this shape, I did a class on glaze pouring. That's not dipping and pouring. That's where you actually pour the glaze. And you make, look at this on the surface. It's amazing. And we did a whole bunch of these. We did vases, we've done bowls, we've done the uh, wall pieces. So many things you can do with the pouring of the glaze and it's super fun. And you can do it with underglazes. I did use Stroke and Coat, which is another Mako product, I know. But if you use underglaze, what you're gonna do is put a clear glaze on top. So something to think about. Now, 
I got, I got, <laughs> I got a lot. Um, underglazes, this was done with stroke and coat, but you could do it with underglaze and designer liner. That's the lemon plate. This, flooding. So we did a flooding tutorial where we flooded the raised areas of texture using watered down underglazes. This here was Colors for Earth, but you could use any company's underglaze. And you get these really great flooded areas of color. Look at how they pop. So have I, have I not shown everything? <laughs> I'm like, whew, gotta catch my breath here. So there's a lot of things. Oh, this one, one more. Okay, so this is a class stamped inlay. So you stamp it, you apply underglaze, and then you scrape back the surface. It's kind of a Mishima, but it's a stamp inlay class. Right here, look at that beautiful little daffodil. And so this is a fun surface decoration one. If you wanna learn how to do this, you don't have to carve anything. You stamp, and then you fill it with color and wipe back. This is one of the first classes I did on Clayshare. So this is almost six years old. So this, there's an oldie but a goodie. I pulled it out of the, of the um, attic maybe. No, it's, it's where I keep my ribs for throwing obviously, but, <laughs> woo, all right, now, let's, let's, sorry Insta folks, I don't want to throw you about, let's put you up here, do, 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 do. all right, we're going to give some stuff away, we're going to give two $25 gift certificates to two lucky folks, um, they get to spend that at Clayscapes Pottery on anything they want, they get to do it, and after we end the broadcast tonight, I'm going to clean all this up and then we're making hand-built spoons in prime time for my premium members. I'm going to show you three different styles and, Got a question about that too. And, and guess what? It's different than the two classes I already have on spoons. I have a wheel throwing spoon class and I have another hand-built spoon class. This one's a totally different one. So you guys are going to love it. So we have a question about spoons. Where is the... Uh, show me and I'll answer it. For the spoon, prime time, am I starting with slabs for those of us who want to try to make along? You can, but you need a specific tool that you might not have. But um, I will be using slabs and, and just clay, like coils or just a lump of clay and roll some coils out. But uh, you might have what you need to make along. I'm using a specific tool, uh, which I will put up uh, in the Clayshare Amazon shop, which is amazon.com slash shop slash Clayshare. That's a lot to say. Now I've got stuff all over me. All right, you wanna give some stuff away. Oh, look, wait, the dinner tray class, thank you. It's called the dinner tray. It's the, the dinner tray. Like, please give me some dinner. You put your hot dogs here, you put your cheeseburger here, you put your coleslaw here, you put your watermelon there and your what else do you guys have at cookouts i like to have like apple cobbler or something so that works for me that's good i'll have that so you could do a summer theme like a barbecue theme okay first gift certificate to clayscapes pottery for 25 dollars is going to cindy oravet congratulations cindy you got 25 dollars to go spend at clayscapes pottery now, to enter all of our giveaways, you just go to clayshare.com and sign up for our emails. That's all you have to do. Premium members are automatically entered. You do not have to do anything at all except sit back and relax. Once you've signed up for our emails, you do not have to enter again. You're always in all of our giveaways. So don't worry about it. If you signed up, you're golden. The second winner of the $25 gift certificate and I, before I say the name, I want to let you know we're doing another giveaway next week. So if you don't win tonight, next Wednesday, maybe you'll win. We'll have to wait and see. Is Angie Turner Ockridge. I hope I said that correctly. I hope I said Angie's, Angie's name correctly. Whew. All right. So can stroke and coat be used with a shaven cream marbling? Sure. Yeah. Um, the, I didn't show any of the marbling with underglazes. I can't believe I didn't grab that. All right, so I'm talking about all the things you can do with underglazes. I have a marbling class, which is different than the pouring glaze class. And when you shave cream, no big, it's not really a secret. It's the way it's done. Uh, I use underglaze. Could you use stroke and coat? Yeah, I don't see why not. Test it. I mean, stroke and coat, the only difference between it and underglaze is it has 
uh, glass formers in it. It's a glaze, it has glaze formers in it. I, I want to show, wait, under glaze, right here, just watered down and brushed on, not wiped back, but used on this little flower pot that we did. Little flower pot, flower planter. I'm not sure what I called it. Nah, it's all right. We're good. We got to go. I got to get, I got to clean all this up before 615. I am not going to be able to, you have a fork cookie cutter and made a cute serving fork. Ah, oh, I bet it is cute. Yes. All right. I've been busy. <laughs> you know, the studio is coming along. We have open studio the 27th and 28th. The public is invited to come stop by. Uh, we won't be here. We won't be in this space at all. This, this, we're going to be in the new building. I don't know how much. We got power. They turned power on yesterday. That We got energized. It was a very exciting day. Um, so I can actually start putting things in, except the ceiling's not done. We haven't finished insulating. We have the back wall to do. So there's still some work to get done. But I got, I got I'd say 10 days, but really only nine, because today is gone. I got nine days. I'll get it done. Don't worry. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you so much for being here with me. Um, remember, for the whole month of May, Clayscapes is doing 20% off Mako products. Use the code Mako2023, lowercase M-A-Y-C-O. And you can get underglazes from them and try some out if you haven't used them before. I hope you try some of the things that I recommended. There's a lot. They have your notebook and you were writing it all down because there was a lot. I need like a break after. I can't believe I made all these classes. And this is only a fraction of it, but there's a lot of information on there. <laughs> all right, everyone. I will see you all, well, my premium members at 615. Everybody else, I'll see you next Wednesday. We're going to be talking about lusters. I know I was going to talk about it tonight. There's no time. Next week, lusters. Bye, everybody. <laughs>